Once upon a time, there was some light. So here I'm going to show a wave, a light wave, traveling to the right. And it was incident upon a thin film. So here's the thin film. And that film was pretty small. It was a distance D thick. And it had an index of refraction. I'm going to call it N2. It's different from outside. So this is N1. Okay. Well, part of this light reflected off the top surface. So here I'm going to draw this in purple. And rather than showing it reflected back this way, I'm just going to scoot it over here just so we can keep them straight, keep them separate. So here's the light now that's propagating back the other direction. It bounced off this top surface. Okay, so it's moving in this way, and those wave fronts are moving with velocity v1 which is the same magnitude as going this way, V1. Okay. So, if I wanted to describe the incident wave, so here I'm going to have a key here. This is the incident wave on the front surface of the film. Now, here I'm going to ignore the amplitude. Um, word of warning, if we start keeping track of how much, how the amplitude gets split up, it gets a little bit complicated. It's still easy to understand, but you'd better learn it in an optics course rather than this introductory one. So let's just describe, let's say the amplitude is 1. And it's going to have a certain wave number, K1 minus omega t. So if I want to describe that wave anywhere and at any time incident, it would be described like this. Now the reflected wave reflected off front surface. And that is described by cosine k1x minus omega t plus pi. Now why pi? Well, it gets a, a pi phase shift. So this is just like a string reflecting off of a fixed point. So the amplitude has to flip. It flips sine, um, which we could accomplish using just a pi phase shift. Okay. Now there's a part of this wave, this original wave, that went into the soap film and it had a different wavelength and therefore a different wave number. And it had a different velocity. So transmitted this part of the wave was transmitted into the film. And it's described by cosine, now k2 of x, minus omega t. k2 is different from the wave, or the wave number outside because there's a different index of refraction inside the soap film. Okay, well part of this wave, again I'm going to draw it down here just so we don't, so it's clear to see. Part of this wave transmits it through again, and we're not going to worry about that, we're just going to look at the, the light that's scattered from back towards the direction it came from. So this light is going to reflect off the back surface, but here we're assuming that the index of refraction inside the film is greater than the index of refraction outside. So if light is traveling in this direction and bounces off the back surface, it will reflect but it doesn't get a pi phase shift, it doesn't flip its sign, it just keeps the same one. So now this part of the wave is propagating back this way with the same velocity and therefore the same wave number, the same wavelength. Okay, so this is uh, 
reflected off back surface. And now it's going to be described by cosine of k2x minus omega t. But remember, it's picking up part of its phase from this guy. This light is was this light that traveled a distance d through the material. So there's this extra phase here, plus k2d. OK. Now, outside the film, this stuff is going to come out. So this is this black line. This is the light that went into the film and bounced back. So really, it's going to be described by the green light, by the green wave. Uh, but now the distance is d. So out here, I'll describe what I'm saying here. Cosine, it's now going to propagate with velocity v1. And therefore, it'll have wave number, wave number k1 and wavelength k1. So it'll be k1 of x minus omega t, everything's at the same frequency. But this was green light that just propagated back through, or the green labeled light, that was propagating back through the thin film surface, which was also the red light that propagated through the film surface going the other way. So I have 2 k2d. So this is just the addition, this is phase that's due to the additional distance that this light, the second path of light, had to follow. And now what I'm going to see is how does the, the purple labeled light line up with the black labeled light. So say I want constructive interference. Constructive interference if so, of course, if whatever's in here is equal to whatever's in here, we're going to have constructive interference. So if what is in here is k1 of x minus omega t plus pi. But this could be shifted by 2 pi. So the purple, the purple light could be... Uh, it doesn't matter. It looks the same if I shift it by 2 pi or if I shift it by 4 pi. I can't tell the difference. So I'm going to say, well, this could be shifted by any multiple. So in class, I said n, which got confusing because I was talking about n as an index or a fraction. So here I'll use m. OK. So any mul multiple of 2 pi, this wave looks the same. So if that is equal to this, then I get constructive interference. Okay. For any m, where m is an integer, if this is fulfilled, then I'm going to get constructive interference, which means my light that's gone into the surface won't cancel out the light that bounced off the front surface. Okay. Well, I can cancel out. I've got like things on both sides of the equation, so I can cancel these out. So now I'm going to factor out pi. In fact, I'll factor out the 2 pi. So I get 2 pi m plus 1 half is equal to 2k2 times d. And k2, again, that's equal to 2 pi over lambda 2. So 2 times 2 pi over lambda 2 times d. And the index of refraction factor is in here. So if I just call lambda my wavelength out in error, then uh, lambda 2 
over n two is equal to just lambda, which is really lambda one. So that means that I have two two pi n two over lambda times d. Okay, I could divide both sides by two pi and divide both sides by two. So I get if d is equal to m plus one half times lambda over two times the index of refraction. So if the thickness of the film is equal to the wavelength times some number plus one half, some integer plus one half, divided by two times the index of refraction, then I get constructive interference. Now your book has a similar formula, except it didn't consider that the film has an index of refraction, which it probably should. So here we've derived something a little bit better than the book and a lot better than I did in class.